Well, Sergio, I, I want to make sure we honor your time. So I'm, I'm not, I, I thought what I would do is, uh, I think you have something prepared, correct? Yeah, I was just going to talk a lot about uh, visual storytelling and uh, just um, kind of, and you know, I wanted to ask too, so you guys get the most out of this, like what, what, what your interests are and what the focus is. I remember you, you sent me like a breakdown mm -hmm. of, of some of the interests that, that, that your crew is doing, right? But yeah. uh, I kind of wanted to see, uh, you know, how many people are, are interested in getting into this on like the pro level or getting into animation in the entertainment industry in general, like what, what the consensus is. Uh, I know there is, uh, and well, you know, I'm not gonna do all the talking guys, you jump in here anytime. Uh, but I know there are a lot of, uh, of the students that were actually interested in being storyboard artists. Uh, some of the others are uh, interested in, in being animators and modelers and riggers and that type of thing. But they're uh -huh. interested in, in <clears throat> how a good understanding of visual and um, storytelling can inform their particular craft, you know, uh, and what they, they want to do. Yeah. Um, and some folks that there actually had a couple of guys that were interested in becoming directors. And I know like Justice, for example, who just joined us. Hey, Justice. Great. Uh, and I know that uh, mm -hmm. they they know that working as a storyboard artist, you're kind of serving in the capacity, at least one of the hats you wear is you're sort of a surrogate director. So it's, it's yeah, for know, sure. Good way uh, to, to hone your Yeah, story. I always say as a story artist, you're, you're a mini director because you have to take responsibility of the scene that you're working on and really understand its place in the bigger project. And then also you have to understand how to break it down. Like visually, you gotta know what's going on. So uh, there's, there's a lot involved with that. Well, how about I, I start with this? Like maybe I, I'll just define a little bit of these terms. So I don't know, you, you guys are all like getting into the business, right? You're like uh, you're trying to get in there. All right, cool. And uh, yeah, let me know if you have any questions. You can shout out. I mean, I'm assuming this is pretty informal. Like I don't have any, like, set lecture that I'm going to do here or anything like that. I have a couple of things I can show you guys, but I kind of want to gear this to, um, to, to what you need, because I want to make sure that you guys are going to get a lot out of this. I, I think the, the biggest thing, like, okay, so let me back up and tell you a little bit about myself. <laughs> so if you don't know who I am, I'm Sergio Paez, and I've been a storyboard artist and animation director for a long time now. And th the other thing that I've done throughout my career is I started mentoring uh, artists and training people. Because this, this started actually on the job when we had to train new people to get into the story department. And what we had to do at, at one of the gigs that I was working at, I was looking at uh, Lucasfilm, is we had to train the 3D guys to do uh, storyboards and to do storytelling. And we were doing a mix of 3D and 2D and all that kind of stuff. Now, what I discovered was, uh, and we all kind of discovered it collectively, but I, I just you know realized it myself, was that, uh, that the, it, was, it was really difficult for the guys that didn't have the storyboarding training, didn't have the film language training to get in to do storytelling. They were great technical people. They could do animation, they could do the shots, they could do the whole software. But when it came to actually creating a scene based on a script, they really struggled. And a lot of people struggle with that. And so what you have to do is you gotta learn, it's a combination of techniques, okay? A uh, combination of film language, right? and also a combination of story structure. And there's more, there's more components to that, but those are the kind of the basics. You put that together and that's, that's what you need to work as a story artist, to be a storyboard artist and work in a story department. It's not just about uh, a technical facility. So you might have pretty drawings, you might be able to render something really great, but if you don't know how to put that in the right place in sequence, in order, uh, it serves you no purpose, okay? And pretty drawings don't get very far in the storyboard, in the, in the story department, because what we're more focused on is the actual story, not the execution of the image, okay? So hopefully that makes sense. There's a filmmaking component to what we do too, right? So we're construct, we're, we're all filmmakers here. We're making films, we're, we're creating narrative sequential projects. And that's what uh, I discovered was, uh, you, got, you have to learn these skills. I, you know, I learned on myself, you know, I learned, I learned because other people told me this stuff, right? So other people mentored me and that's how I, I picked up these skills. I really think that's the only way you learn 
I don't think you're born with it. I, I've met very few people. <laughs> I don't think anybody, I'd say I haven't met anybody who's got this natural talent. That's all I think just fake. Like, I think you, you really have to learn this stuff and you have to train. So um, I've worked at Pixar, I've worked at Lucasfilm, I've worked on feature stuff, I've worked on TV shows, I've directed things, commercials, all, like pretty much anything in the story development like genre I've done in VR, all that kind of stuff. And um, it's, it's really, it comes down to the same thing. Can you tell a story? Can you tell it clearly? And can you get, can you communicate your message across, right? Does that make sense? <laughs> um, so, so let me, let me talk a little bit. Okay, okay, what does it take to actually get into this? How do you actually become good at doing this stuff? One of the things that I think you, you have to have, and if you don't have it, uh, you know, this is the one thing that is very difficult to teach. You have to have the passion for doing this stuff, okay? You really have to love it. And I say that with uh, all sincerity because you can't come into this and be like, ah, you know, this is kind of a hobby. You know, I like doing film, but I also like sewing and I like swimming and I like whatever else. You have to choose what focus you want. And this is one of those like loves and passions that if you don't have this passion, I find it really, really difficult for people to succeed. Now, let me explain why. <laughs> because you probably, are, I don't know, maybe you guys have gone out there and tried to get jobs, but you discover uh, when, you, when you get to a, a sticking point or where you hit barriers or you try and you know, make a portfolio, you might, you might hit these difficult points, right? In order for you to get through that, okay, you have to power through it and understand, one, how to reverse engineer the solution. But then also, you, if, if you really love it, you're going to find a way to get your goal. If you really want to make a film, you really want to be an artist, okay? And if you really want to make a living being an artist, being a professional at this, uh, you're going to have to have that passion, okay? So that's, that's the first thing. <laughs> because you're going you're gonna to like doing it, right? That's the whole point, right? It's like if, if, if you're, you know, uh, I don't know, if you're an athlete, right? If you're playing baseball, if you don't like baseball, like how are you ever going to get good at it? <laughs> so it's the same thing with art, art, right? You better love art and filmmaking in order to get really, really good at it. And then you're going to be able to, to compete on the pro level. So uh, there's a way to get there, right? And so let me, let me explain a little bit about uh, how I think some of those things go down. So what you have to do is you have to understand what skills you need to get into the business. Okay, that's one thing. That's actually quite... Once you figure it out, it's, it's not that difficult um, to do. Now, the difficult part of that is you have to practice it. You got to practice over and over and over and over and over again, okay? And this is constant work, and this is where that passion comes in. You have to be constantly working at your drawings and creating storyboards and art and filmmaking and talking story, understanding structure, reading books, you know, getting into it, right? Watching films, that's the other one. Like, how many of you guys are watching films on a regular basis, you guys watch movies, I hope, right? Yeah, hell yeah. And uh, I, I, I would assume you guys all have like your, your favorite TV shows and your favorite you know, movies. I hope you guys are also talking amongst yourselves and your friends and family, whatever, like breaking it down, man, I really like that scene when you know, that character came in there. Oh no, I, that was terrible. I can't believe they put that. How did they get that film made? You, know, you, you have these kinds of discussions, right? And those are the things you have to kind of understand uh, the film language part of how to like put this together. Okay. <laughs> now, uh, like uh, you said that, uh, was it Justice? You want to become a director? Who else is, is looking to become a director? Yes. Awesome. Uh, Christian is. Savannah, Christian. all right. Mm -hmm. Christian wants to be a director. Excellent. That's great. Um, that's a noble goal. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's, it's very possible. So uh, let me talk a little bit about one path. We have a we have a guy, a collaborator. So, oh, I, I should mention this other thing. This is kind of how we find each other, right, Tad? Is the, is the storyboard art platform. So right. I, I yeah. run a, a visual storytelling uh, website, uh, storyboardart.org. You guys can check that out. There's a bunch of stuff on there. And um, one of the guys that, that collaborated with me, I, I worked with him at Lucasfilm, this guy, John Carlo Volpe, did a lecture and a breakdown of like the different avenues to getting into the entertainment business, um, particularly focused on like filmmaking and storytelling. And he did like a producer route, right? So like what you would do to like get in, in there would be on the production side. 
he did a storyboard artist route, which is, you know, probably similar, well, certainly my background and maybe some of you guys want to get into that too. Uh, he also talked about the director route. And I, I agree with a lot of the stuff that he's talking about. So um, the, the producer route, I'll just like briefly cover that if you guys want to hear, is <laughs> like, it's mostly you, you get in, you're, you know, you get in doing production, you're more on the administrative, administrative side and you're kind of organizing the stuff, right? So scheduling, budgets, uh, making sure people are, are on task, the departments are working. You might be helping people out, take notes and uh, do uh, production related uh, note, note taking and following up on the meetings and stuff like that. That's all part of being a producer and it's, it's a super necessary job and there's plenty of work to go around for, for production. Some people be, are able to jump back and forth. Um, and so the, the next one that I wanted to mention is, is the storyboard artist route is like you, you get in with your skills and a strong portfolio. So the thing that you really need, you don't need a fancy degree. You don't need any kind of titles. In fact, that stuff is, I find pretty useless. <laughs> I have my strong opinion, opinions about that. But um, the, what you do need is a, a really good portfolio to show that you can do the work. And in that portfolio, uh, I can show you some examples, but I'll get to that in a second. In that portfolio, you you want to show the key uh, the key skills that a storyboard artist will do on the job that you're trying to apply for, and it's different for every studio. Okay, so if you're applying for Pixar, you're gonna have one portfolio. If you're applying for you know uh, like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle action show, you have to have a different portfolio and show them different stuff. Um, don't assume that the same thing will work on one production because you know it, things are so specialized and the competition is the way it is. That you have to show those specific skills. Okay. Uh, let's say you land a job with that strong portfolio. You figure that part out. Okay. And uh, you get that job. So what you do is you're going to work for a number of years learning. Okay. And this is the, the the thing that I really emphasize is that your education does not stop because you get a job. In fact, your ed in my opinion, your education should never stop. Okay. Which means if you're watching films, you're going to be watching films to your debt. Okay. And you're going to be watching and practicing and learning and creating better art and creating more, you know, learn, learning more drawing techniques, everything you can, because you're gonna need it and you should want it. It should be something that you're, like I said, you're passionate about, you're into. Um, so when you get that job, what you're gonna wanna do is learn as much as you possibly can. So that's gonna be the springboard for the next job and the next job and you're gonna fill out your portfolio and it's gonna have more and better work and quality work to show. And that's going to be the start of your career to be able to move around. And, um, you know, you might stay on one production for a long time, but it seems it's typical that you would bounce around, you know, productions usually last three to five years. Uh, you know, we might be on one show for a year, maybe a couple months, could be any series of those things. Uh, or you could be at, at a bigger studio for, you know, I know guys who have been at Pixar, for example, for, for 20 years. So they just, they landed there and they, they stayed there <laughs> and that's great. Uh, my career has been a little bit more project based, um, but it's it's however you design it. But to me, it's that learning experience, meeting new people, networking. Okay, that's another key word you're gonna have to understand. You gotta meet people, you gotta connect, and you have to share and make friends and collaborate. Okay, um, so then when you do that for a couple of years, where you're gonna the, the the natural experience you're gonna get is understanding how the production is done. You're gonna know the the production processes. You can know what it takes, how long it takes. And eventually you get to the point where you're more confident with your skills. At that point, um, this is where you would usually get more responsibility and be able to take charge of the team. Either you start supervising or you jump on in and you direct, okay? And that's great because what you then have to do is, I don't think the storytelling component ever goes away because that's to me the one key thing you have to be a master of. You have to understand why this and why the things are happening and all the story elements and really be able to analyze that in a very clear way okay no matter what position you are and when you get to the director it's so much more important because you're going to be um uh you're going to be the one you know guiding other artists and collaborate it's all it's a group effort right it's a team sport here okay it's not like i'm the director and i, I know what to do no no you really need help <laughs> and you need other you need to rely on other people so that's one way where you got to communicate well. You have to, um, hopefully, that's when you can mentor somebody else. 
and that's kind of the position I've been in for uh, a number of years. And uh, and then you can you can guide a production. And there's different levels of direction. There's you know episodic direction. There's um, story supervision, and there's um, feature direction where you're you know you're a movie director, just like you know I'm sure you guys are Spielberg and Brad Bird and all these guys that um, that do the big movies, right? Uh, at that point, you know you really you have a lot on your shoulders. It's a big big, big, heavy job, and it's very, very um, demanding. So that's where you really need all the skills you have to be able to analyze these things as well. Okay, does that make sense? <laughs> um, so the normal career path is like, my recommendation for anybody who wants to get into this business is like, you gotta specialize, okay? You have to be a master of something, whether it is editing, whether it's writing, whether it's, uh, if you're a model or you're doing 3D animation, you're a 3D animator, um, that's what you have to just, really own okay in my case it was storytelling and storyboards and i'm i'm very confident in the skills that i have when it comes to breaking down a script and understanding how to develop images for story okay that's my my, my bread and butter based on that i can branch out into other things like the skills will stack and then you become you're able to do more stuff so to me the goal of this whole um idea is that we have a career Okay, that you're able to make a living doing your art and getting paid for it. Um, uh, our team is going to put out a, a web page, which is which is great. We did some research, and um, it tur turns out in the United States, the average salary for a storyboard artist is eighty-two thousand dollars, which is pretty good. You know, compare that to like uh, even like an architect or somebody like that. Uh, I think we make better money <laughs> uh, doing this. So there is uh, a career. There is stuff. So Another thing that happens, and I, I mentioned it because it's very real, the people, like maybe your close friends, maybe your family, they have no idea what you're doing and why you're doing it. They think you're gonna be broke. They think you're gonna be starving. <laughs> so uh, this is where I would slap them with that website and be like, look, I can, this is what, if I do this right, this is what I can do. I can get in this business and make this money, okay? Now, we also have on that webpage, people who are working at Disney and DreamWorks and Warner Brothers, their salaries are higher. It's like 120K and like there, there's, you know, very good six figure solid income. So there's a career here is basically what I'm telling you about. <laughs> and you can do, you can branch out of this and do other things. You can do video games, you can do, uh, you know, mobile apps and whatever. If you understand, if, you're, if your specialization is the communication of an idea, I don't think you'll at least, well, knock on wood, right? It's like, I don't think we'll ever be out of work because that kind of stuff is always in demand, right? I've seen, uh, Productions, they outsource animators, they can outsource modelers and stuff. I haven't seen a successful production that can outsource uh, the story team. That's always usually very close and tight to the producers and to the, like the directing group. And, and the reason why is because that's so super important when it comes to a production. If you don't get that right, to me, everything else is just icing on the cake. Uh, you know, no matter of visual effects is going to fix your story problems. You got to get that right. And so that's why this, this type of stuff is really, really important. So uh, I know I'm biased, but if you guys want to do other things, like if you want to be an animator, you want to be um, a lighter, whatever it is, whatever discipline you go into, which are all needed jobs, by the way. And, and I don't think anything else is, um, uh, you know, more, every, everything is valid. Like all these jobs are, are very valid positions. Even a producer, I would say. You have to learn visual storytelling because in the end, we're all a team telling stories, okay? So if you're clueless about this stuff and you go into a production, you're at the, the mercy of everybody else who's, who's writing the show. But if you, can, if you can contribute and you understand why an image is powerful and, and the emotional response, then you're, you're at an advantage. And that's something, that's an asset. You're, that means you're valuable, okay? You can, you can use that and charge money and have a career and all these things that that we're talking about. So uh, does that make sense? Any any questions about that? I know I'm talking a lot about this. I, I, I did want to show you guys some examples. Can I, uh, can I do that? Absolutely. Yeah, I've got you. Uh, you have screen share capabilities. Okay, let me, um, I want to show you this stuff because I think it's super cool. So um, I'm, let me pull up my folders uh, as I, as I talk, is that uh, well, so we, we, have a, we have a training program with the, the, the storyboard art uh, group that we do. And 
we, we help people go pro. That's basically what it comes down to. And, um, you know, at first we've developed this program over a number of years, but basically if you want to become a pro artist, we can show you how, and we train you over, um, over a year in this, in this program. And, uh, and then what, what is amazing to me is the results that we're getting. And so we've had, so we've had students that come in with, with raw skills. Some of them are like, you know, they have diverse backgrounds. Some are pros already that kind of come on. They want to just network more, fine tune their skills. And uh, other people are like recent graduates or, or um, they, they're like, they can want to try storyboards or storytelling and they, they don't know how. Here, here's, my, here's my gripe with um, the traditional education um, uh, kind of, uh, what do you call it? Um, formula. And, and again, no offense to, to you guys if you're going through that right now, but what I would encourage you to do is just be, just be open-minded and creative about this. But the, I've seen the direct training. Like one of the things that, that I know of is the, the Pixar uh, internship and the internal training, they call it Pixar University. And this was developed over a number of years because they, they figured out they needed this. They spend if I, if I have my numbers correct, I think they spend six months and they bring on interns and these are, you know, new people that, that have to apply even internally. If you want to jump from one department to the other, you have to apply internally, show a portfolio and get accepted. And if you're accepted into this program, it's uh, six months of training, 40 hours a week, and you're working with the other story artists just doing uh, story assignments. And it's just super intensive. So compare that to what you get at a university level uh, school where uh, you have to pay like you know six figures or hundred thousand dollars to get something that if you're not getting that kind of training you're not going to have the portfolio that you need to, to get work right and after that pixar internship is done <laughs> that still doesn't guarantee those people inside get the job once they're done with the internship they have to apply again as now their new story and show them hey this is what i can do and either you make it or you get cut that's how competitive it really is <laughs> so um so this is this is because Pixar is is really trying to fine tune the story. They really use the story department to um, to you know level up and make their films. That's the way uh, it's it's a very crucial part of their production process, right? So anyway, I'm going on and on, but let me share let me share my screen <laughs> and I'll bring up some examples and I want to show you this. So th these are some of the students in our in our program, and this is uh, Kylie Gay. I want to show you her stuff. Uh, and these are just random images. I don't even know. I don't even remember what they, what they were, but I'll bring this up. Can you guys see my screen? Yes, sir. Yeah. Awesome. Yep. Okay. I'll make this bigger. Uh, so she was a recent graduate uh, when she came to us in 2018 at a SCAD animation school. And, um, and I just want, I'll just flip this real quick. Cause I just want to give you an idea of, uh, you know, what kind of, what kind of boards, um, people are doing when maybe they're a little bit earlier in their career. You know, a couple things you'll notice is that, and so this was a sequence that she did. She created it on her own. It's her own personal idea. Um, and we went back and forth and talking about, uh, you know, story design and different concepts. The couple things that you'll notice there's there's uh, very limited drawings, very basic black and white. That's all she's working with right now. There's no color. There's no fancy rendering. There's none of that stuff. Really. It's just basic stuff and you know here she might get a little more elaborate there's a lot of posing and stuff going on but the line work is still pretty sketchy right you see that so it's not like they're being she's not being precious about um the drawing you know there's a couple tones in there you know this this might be a second pass that she did um for that okay and um the idea is that you're creating a very clear and simple drawing that you can pitch an idea and they're expendable they're they're, they're drawings that you can throw out Okay, <laughs> and because what you're going to end up having to do is, let me see if I got another version of this one. Uh, what you're going to end up having to do is uh, uh, iterate and do one over another over another. So this one, let me see if I can make this slightly bigger. Well, these are a little small, smaller, but as thumbnails, I guess you can see now these are starting to get tighter and the line work is a little bit cleaner. I know the drawing is a little small here. Sorry about that. Well, actually, how about let me pull this up. Uh, this might work a little bit better. And just to give you an idea that this, this would be considered a finished pass. So some people, that's a question that comes up is like, how tight do you have to make your boards? This is about as tight as you want to go. 
really. Um, it depends on the project, right? If you're working on a feature, you know, live action movie and they want really highly rendered storyboards, you're gonna do something different than doing continuity boards for, for Pixar or something like that, right? But for, for, for an animatic that this is gonna end up on a story reel, that if you understand the, the terms that I'm talking about here, you, you compile your drawings and you create an animatic reel for this stuff. Um, this is about as tight as you wanna go. And you, know, you can even go looser because sometimes you just run out of time. But this is Kylie and I wanna show you um, a couple more of her single panel storytelling images. Let me see if I can find those. Those I thought were really, really cool. Uh, yeah, this one, Delicatessen. Give me one second here. I have these in a folder. Well, how about, I'll, I'll show you Mirganka. Uh, he is from India and he joined our story artist mentorship and he did um, color boards. Now these are in the square format because he wanted to post these on social media. But we have an exercise that we um, encourage people to do, which is a single panel storytelling image. Can you tell a story in one image, okay? And this, these are some of his examples. And again, um, you know, you'll see common threads, but like the, the simplification of line, the clarity of the, the image, you're not doing illustration here, right? There's a difference between doing concept art and actually doing um, a storyboard, right? And, and the reason is you want them simple because at a quick read, like if you're instantly looking at something, you wanna, you wanna see it and immediately identify what's going on. If you put too much fancy rendering and too much color and it becomes a full like oil painting, then, you somewhat get distracted from the focal point of what you want to do. So a lot of times that's why storyboards look very simple, right? This is another one, uh, cow getting abducted. <laughs> and, you know, you, very simple stuff. And the, the thing is not all of them are winners, right? Uh, you, can, you can riff off of all of these ideas, but I think they're, they're just very cool and fun things to look at, right? Uh, hopefully that inspires you guys. Let me, let me show you a couple other uh, another couple of ones. This one is cool from, hold on, uh, there it is. Uh, I'm gonna bring up Kenny's stuff. So this is a really cool story. Uh, Kenny Valenka, who was also in one of our early um, mentorship groups. Let me pull up, I think this one, no. Uh, is, here we go. This one was, uh, he was 19 when he came to the program and he was deciding whether to get into uh, storyboards or go to college. And he emailed us. In fact, he reminded me, I spoke to him the other day. He reminded me of this story. I almost forgot. He said he had, <laughs> he said he had a thousand bucks in his, in his pocket and uh, he was living with his parents at the time. So, you know, he was able to pay rent and stuff, but like, um, or, you know, he was covered with his living expenses and he was deciding whether to like go into debt and, and go to school or come to our program. And he had really good drawings, like he had a really good, like solid foundation, right? And I told him, look, man, you're the type of artist that we can train and get you to the next level, but you have to do the work. You're going to have to invest your time and energy in doing this stuff. And this is an action sequence that he put together um, that I'm just kind of flipping through. Hopefully you guys can see how it all plays out. And again, very simple drawings, but there's a lot going on, the staging, the, the overlapping action the the camera moves right it's going from one side of the screen to the other right he he's really uh really uh get taking control of the scene and understanding the characters and what to do right and, and action scenes are very very difficult they're they're complex logistically so that's why um it's important to understand your, your film language and all that stuff but the the cool thing with kenny is after after working with us for a year he landed a job at disney uh, Disney TV, and he worked on The Proud Family as um, as a storyboard artist, and that's mainly because he he did the work, right? He, he put the time in and was making uh, the effort, but he had a solid portfolio that he could shop around, and and that's uh, what got him the job. And now he's a working professional. So that you know, instead of going into, into debt, he actually got a, a career started because he he was focusing on his portfolio. He didn't have a college degree or any of that stuff. Well, he might have had, he had some kind of certificate from like a, a game school. But again, it, in the entertainment business, it's what you can do as an artist that really, that really matters. 
Let me show you one more um, example. This one's from Ben. Uh, this one is a, yeah. So hopefully this will play well. Um, I'll just play it and let me know if, if you can if you can see this okay. I'm not sure if the audio or not, but this is an animatic that another artist, Ben McMillan, made. And this is a dramatic scene. And again, he compiled all of this. He created the drawings first. I think he was using Toon Boom. Maybe a combination of Photoshop as well. And uh, there's it was based on a <clears throat> excuse me, based on a script. And there's some dialogue there. And it, yeah, he's always well, got subtitles on it. And so uh, we did some back and forth, but I think the what he what he really had a command of is like understanding when to cut, when to hold on a particular uh, character, when to do reaction shots. And this is kind of like a you know at the White House and with President Truman, there's like a drama going on. And what are they going to do? There might, there might be a potential war. There's this whole backstory to this. But uh, yeah, to, to be able to handle a dramatic scene properly takes a lot of work. And I've seen this before. It's like if you don't understand your film language, you really flounder and the scenes come out flat and uh, the staging is flat. The characters um, are, are, are pretty flat. Like there's no, there's no real character. We don't understand or connect emotionally with the, with the characters as an audience. So those are some things that, that you really want to, uh, to take a look at and, and make sure you're, you understand what the scene requires and being able to deliver that. Okay, does that make sense? So uh, I'll let this play out actually. You know, one thing when, when you have a scene like this, when you're dealing with multiple characters, you have to make sure that you, your staging is clear and that, uh, that it's also uh, interesting so that you're not just shooting talking heads, that you actually have characters get up, move around, the camera has something to do, has some kind of action, and you're uh, getting the emphasis and the emotional response where you need it. And that's actually quite challenging. And we're, I think we're so accustomed to watching films that it just kind of goes by naturally. But, but when you actually have to do it, you'll find out how difficult it really is to, to pull this stuff off. So how about I, I pause it there and, uh, and stop that stuff. All right, cool. So um, does that kind of make sense that um, I guess that mainly it's just the components of what we're doing here uh, to get in the business. I think a lot of a lot of questions that come up is like, you know, what kind of portfolio do I need? Um, you know, uh, what should I show? What should I show to apply to, to Disney? And, and it's not. I think the real question that you should be asking yourself, it, if you if you don't know already, the, the answer to that question, that means you have to go find out before you actually apply to these, to these studios because you're gonna get outright rejected, <laughs> okay? Unfortunately, that's the case. So uh, what, I, what we like to do is show people like what you need to do to construct your portfolio one. And even before that, you gotta build up the skills so that you can put those into your portfolio. And then when you actually go out, there's a whole strategy when you actually apply to studios, um, how you do it, uh, how, how to follow up, how to network. There's a little bit of strategy uh, when it comes to that stuff too. So, um, but anyway, I've done enough blabbering here. I, I wanted to know, yeah, how about, you know, if you guys have any questions, maybe we can steer the conversation to more of what you guys are into. Or not, I can show you some more good, good stuff. <laughs> um, qu quick question. Um, have you uh, ever personally um, been involved in the story as a storyboard artist or as a director, or do you kind of just kind of like navigate to uh, portray the script visually, or have you had any involvement with the script? Or... Yes, uh, yeah, totally. Uh, every, every project's gonna be different. So you'll have some projects where they hand you a script and then it's just your job to execute it. Um, within that though, you do have a lot of freedom as a, as a visual storyteller to manipulate the scene, even though you can't change the words on the script and you have to you know, uh, execute it in the order that it's presented to you, the, the shots that you choose, are th those are your decisions. So that's why you're the director there. Um, but yes, the, to answer your question, I have been on some productions, like for example, on Star Wars Rebels and Resistance and, and 
kind of Clone Wars, like those animated shows that we've been on, the way that we would uh, work the episodes was that we, we had a script, we discuss it, but then when it goes to the story team, we have a kind of break, we have a like a kickoff meeting and we read the script together and we identify points where we might have to make some adjustments. And at that point, we're suggesting dialogue changes. And there was some flexibility baked into the schedule so that if there were, um, they hadn't recorded the voices until later on. This was for an animated show. And so uh, you do get the opportunity to make um, su suggestions on the scripts. So there's, there's kind of like this, uh, there's this like uh, kind of a hidden beef that happens in, in the story department with the storyboard artists. Because a lot of times story, storyboard artists will end up writing a scene. They actually create, either they create it with images or they literally write it in words. And then that gets translated into images. But they don't, we usually don't get credit for that. The writers get credit for it, <laughs> even though we actually wrote the scene. Sometimes you do, like I think the Pixar movies are pretty good about that, um, especially on their shorts and stuff. Uh, they'll give credit to storyboard artists. I think um, like SpongeBob, I think some of those like are directly created, uh, you know, by the story artist, and so they give them credit for that. They they write the episodes with words, so and with pictures. So, um, so this is why I say it's super important to learn your story structure and to learn about writing. I would highly recommend you guys, um, if this is something you're into, grab a, grab a, a screenwriting book. And I have a I could, well, how about I recommend you guys a couple that I like. Um, there, some of them are back on my bookshelf here. <laughs> it's like uh, Story by Bob McKee, I think is a super common one. You probably heard about it um, or maybe somebody recommended it to you. I, I still think it's a good one. They talk about three act structure. It's a little bit dense, but you know, if you're into it, I, I like to read that. Um, the other one that I kind of like to recommend more because it's a more fun read is uh, Blake Schneider's uh, Save the Cat. It's a very short, like thin book, right? Have you seen this? Had like a, oh yeah yeah i actually bought a, a copy of it for my daughter because uh, she's an aspiring writer so i said this is a, this is a good yeah. uh, it's a wonder. really good book like yeah. it's fun to read because he's a good writer and it's pretty short but the information is so on point and he there's a series of books unfortunately i think he passed away the, the author but he was like a writer on big movies and stuff and he decided to to write this um, screening writing book it's his method okay there's many methods of screenwriting it's his personal method, but I like it. I think it's really valid and it'll get you quickly to the right mindset of how to do storyboarding uh, or, or just storytelling, right? Um, story structure. And he's coming at it from a writer's perspective. Uh, so I would recommend you guys do that and be knowledgeable what, about that. Learn about subtext. I talk about this in our program is when you have dialogue, uh, you don't just, don't just want to write dialogue that's on the nose, which means like, Somebody comes in the door and they're like, hi, I just came in the door. You wouldn't say that. You'd be like, what, what the, the character says is not what the character uh, is actually doing or, or showing. The subtext is, is a hidden meaning behind what they say, okay? It could also be the tone of how they say it. So if I, if I come up to somebody and shake their hand and be like, um, wow, that's, that's a beautiful, that's a beautiful uh, hat that you're wearing. Uh, it, it might be a compliment. But if I, if I say it slowly or in a different tone, like, oh, that's, that's a beautiful hat that you got on, right? Just the, the pacing, the pause of it could infer a different meaning. And you have to show that visually, right? And this is where the act, so this is where an actor's job, if you're on a live action movie, an act, that's what an actor does. The actor acts based on the subtext and the dialogue, okay? Um, and, and there's a lot to, the, to that art form. So as a storyboard artist, you should also know about that because you're going to have to manipulate and move characters around and, uh, and you have to understand the, the meaning of why you're doing that. So the, it gets deep when, when you get into this whole filmmaking aspect of it. Uh, you know, there's lenses, those kinds of stuff that you, you should also know about. Um, yeah, it, it really gets deep in the whole filmmaking. thing. So I would say that filmmaking component of it, um, learn as much as you can. Learn about writing, learn about lenses, learn about uh, set operation. So if you know how, this is what, I find this stuff fascinating. So uh, I, I'm not like opposed to, to learning these things. Some people, well, may just focus on, let's say the drawing of it, but um, I like to just 
go at this kind of holistic approach. I like looking at documentaries of like Spielberg and all these guys, how they, how they break down the set, where they place the lights. Like that, that has to do, you know, if I have to create a storyboard, I need to know that stuff. I need to know like why, why uh, they're putting the camera in that place to make an efficient shot, okay? And so get interested about this stuff and, and fall in love with it. I think it's, it's really good, good things to know. Um, okay, anyway, sorry, that was a long-winded answer to your question, <laughs> but hopefully uh, that made sense. Oh yeah, absolutely, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Anything else that you guys wanted to chat about? Oh, I have a question. <laughs> yes. So I, I want to do um, character designing. Is it worth me doing a storyboard of some sort with that character? Or should I stick to making more just character characters for it instead? Uh, that's, a, that's a really good question. Here's my take on, on character designs and, um, and characters. This is why I'm totally biased to like the story aspect of it. I think if you're going to do a character design, the char you should tell a story with your design. Who is that character, right? And how you're going to show, so it's not just putting a character in a T-pose, which is like, yeah. you know, doing a 3D turnaround or something like that. Those are useless. I find, you know, well, I shouldn't say useless because they actually have, they're, they're, they're useful for as a production right? Yeah, because yeah. like, you know, people will take that and model the character or, whatever, mm -hmm. or, or design it. But I would rather you show the character in storytelling poses or, a, or a per, show the personality of the character with the design. And that also includes the, the clothing and uh, the costume and the props and everything else that the character would do. So let's use a simple example like a pirate. If you just have a pirate just standing there, it tells me nothing. But does he have a patch? Like, is he, you know, is he old? Is he like grizzly? Like, can you tell who that character is based on the pose, position, and, and design? And this is where that, to me, that whole storytelling idea comes in. That it's not just about a pretty image. A lot of people can do really good character designs, but can you can you bring that character to life with a story? <laughs> That's to me what is important. So let me tell you another thing, and this is this is where like I want to draw you into um, <laughs> to the visual storytelling side. You come to the dark side of, of this. Well, I say it's the light side. Come to the light. Become a Jedi. Uh, is like there's a lot of character designers out there. There's a lot of competition for that. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people compete on skill level, right? They say, oh man, just like Ian McKaig's designs are the best. We're going to get this guy. He's amazing. Or, you know, pick, pick your flavor of choice. Like I, there's one guy that uh, is amazing that I really like, Borja Montoro. Uh, I, I got a chance to work with him in, in Spain. And um, I think he's one of the top character designers working today. And, uh, you know, you're going to have to compete with that guy. Okay. So um, that's true. Right, and he's got like he's got like a thirty year head start. <laughs> let me tell you. Yeah, yeah. So, and I'm not saying and I don't want to discourage you, but the whole point that I'm trying to make here is, um, how do you, uh, how do you show your own personality in your character design? And this is what you can do. You have this superpower. Uh, you're mm -hmm. able to do this. Is that if you if you can show what makes your character design special because of the way you do it, the the ideas mm -hmm. that you have. You will be more valuable than all these other guys that might have more skill and 30 years of experience ahead of you but because you have something special they don't right and this is why i like storyboards and storytelling because as a storyboard artist everybody's unique it's the storytelling um interpretation of the idea that only you can do so i don't think there's two story artists in the world or, or filmmakers in the world that can create the same exact story the same way i just don't think it's possible Right, because you, it's your, yeah. your own personal experience. Mm -hmm. It's your own background. You know, uh, it's the the type of things you like. You know, I, I like certain filmmaking styles. I like certain camera angles. So I'll put that in my work, and um, mm -hmm. and you know that's hopefully why people will hire me. Uh, but you're going to do it different, and so that's where I say uh, think think hard about if you're going to get into this like visual development um, type of discipline how you can set yourself apart from that because uh, it becomes somewhat difficult in a, in a very competitive uh, environment if, if you're not doing that already, right? 
Yes, it does. I'm I'm working on it. <laughs> oh, the cat. <laughs> yeah, my cat. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm working on it. I've been trying to just do more, look at more, understand more. It's a lot, but I want to I want to do it. <laughs> I want to do it. So I got to get better than what I am currently. I'm just like I need to be better. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, you, I think you're saying you, you hit it right on the head. It's like um, some people get intimidated. They you know, you heard about this like imposter syndrome that we all have as artists. It's like, I'm not good enough. I can't, I can't make it. That guy's way better. You know, I just mentioned a couple of names, but you know, that might be intimidating. But like I said, they started somewhere. Okay. They all sucked when they began. Let me tell you, we've all been there. Like we've all had really crappy drawings at the beginning. I don't know anybody who's like a magical gifted savant. I just don't. When you're at that high level and man, I've had the, the great honor to work with just some super talented people. And they, those are the hardest working people you will meet. Those are the people that are willing to put in the time to become an awesome artist, right? It's like, I always compare this to like uh, dance or sports or music, right? If you want to be an amazing piano player, it's not by watching somebody play the piano. You're going to have to put in the time to make those scales and practice and practice and practice and practice. Same thing with art and filmmaking uh get started now so that you can put in the time and you can get there and there's ways to do this so like i said you know in our program or hopefully you're in a place where um, there are other people that can mentor you or teach you that they can show you the shortcuts of how to get there um because it's hard it really is uh, but the rewards are great if you can put this stuff together if you can really power through it you know Oh, thank you so much for your critiques and your all this stuff for showing me because I've been looking at my portfolio and I've been trying to update it. And then just like last week, I was looking at more stuff for my portfolio and realized I, I need to be better <laughs> because of all the stuff that I see. I was like uh -huh. all the little critiques and the things I could do better. So I was like, I got to get more content out. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and, and hopefully it's not intimidating. You know, everybody looks at other artists and like, you know, unfortunately we compare and, you know, I'm, I'm guilty of that too. But you should really only compare um, the growth that you have to yourself. So are you better tomorrow? Are you, well, are you better today than you were yesterday, right? And mm -hmm. if that's the answer is yes, great, keep going, right? Mm -hmm. And at the end of the year, are you better at the end of the year than you were at the beginning? That's all that matters, okay? And you know, better is subjective as well. So you have to mm -hmm. get the pick your metric of how to how to grow, right? Are your drawing skills um, more confident? Is your line work more confident? Are you um, able to handle the scene and understand how to break it down uh, easier, faster, right? Those mm -hmm. kinds of things that you can, you can measure, all right? And um, so the you know, I'm I'm happy you seem to like the the comments. I I find. And people don't talk about this. And this is where I, my, my mm. gripe comes out. It's good that you have like somebody like Tad who's helping you out and, and, and giving some guidance here because mm. the way we learn this stuff is by working in perfect, like somebody else showed, like the, the way I learned, for example, was coming up in the industry. Like I, I went to art school. I did that kind of traditional education. I had a you know, basic portfolio. I landed my first entry level job. But when I started working, that's when I discovered, oh man, I have a lot to learn. And then I started soak, I'm just that kind of personality. I soak up mm -hmm. as much information that I can from others. And people were very generous and they you know, give of their time and show me, that's kind of their job. If you have a supervisor, <laughs> it should be their job mm -hmm. to guide you along. Otherwise, you know, so, some have different <laughs> attitudes about it, but um, I'm the kind that I really like that apprentice, like mentor, mentee kind of uh, setup. Uh, I've seen progress a lot, um, you know, not just the guys that we have, but guys I've been working with, uh, you know, after like, just tell you a quick story. Like one of the guys that I worked with at Lucasfilm, well, I'll tell you two stories if you don't mind. <laughs> there's no, one guy that came fine. in. Okay. There's, there's one, one guy that came in, um, who's actually a mentor now with us on storyboard art. He's, he's a good friend. Uh, I work with him directly at Lucasfilm. But anyway, when he, I remember when he first started, he was fresh out of school, maybe had like one job under his belt from CalArts. And CalArts is a fancy school and everybody thinks, oh, it's great it and all that kind of stuff. He came into Lucasfilm and got a rude awakening because uh, he, that's where you learned that like what you really had to learn. And 
you know, he's very green. Then over many years, I just saw him develop and blossom into this awesome veteran. And then now he's, he's just a super skilled and amazing veteran artist, right? And he's been at it now for like 10, 15 years, just uh, amazing. So, uh, so he, he worked at it, he learned these things, right? It's not just, not that he just sat back, and, oh, I finally got a job. Okay, I can relax. No, he actually worked at it, okay? There's another story I like to tell, which is kind of cool. Uh, again, he reminded me of this too. Um, intern, he was an intern coming out of San Jose State. He got a job at um, Lucasfilm. It's a local college that he was at and came, oh. came up to Lucasfilm. Intern, he was just, you know, shoveling papers, passing coffee around. Like um, Everybody liked him because he had a really good attitude. He was a nice guy, and, you know, young kid. And then uh, one day he found out that I was, you know, I taught people, I do lectures and stuff like that. And this was a long time ago. And then he's like, hey man, can, can you show me some things? I, I really like learn. Like, sure, okay, what do you want to do? He's like, I really, you know, I like story. I like to do that. And he's like, okay, um, here, I'll show you. So like, I don't know, we took some breaks or lunchtime. I forgot when it was exactly, but I, I showed him some tricks, but the stuff that uh, you got to get through the basics, right? And um, uh, then he was doing really good. I was like, man, all right, excellent. He was actually doing the work and, and coming up. So I, I convinced, I was this other director. I had to convince him. I really had to twist his arm and be like, hey man, uh, let's give this guy a shot. I know he's an intern and stuff, but um, I told him like, look, I will take res full responsibility of the scene. If he can't do it, I will do it. But let's let's see what he can do, okay? <laughs> and uh, he was like, just begrudgingly, like, oh, I don't know, Sergio, man, okay, okay, okay. You just, you gotta be on top of it. So I did, and I, I, I handed him the scene. I you know, gave him the script and had him break down. I was like, maybe a page or so. And he did really well, and he, he did it. And the, the director was actually pleased and happy. And then he ended up over, so he ended up getting hired uh, after that internship as a entry-level story artist. And he got into the story department and he ended up becoming that director's like go-to guy because over the years he developed into like super awesome and solid story artist. And he he came back and he told, oh man, Sergio, I just, you know, thank you for, for, for doing that for me. But it's like, you know, other people do that for me. And when you, when you learn the skills, you can make breakthroughs, right? This is not rocket science. It's, it's a combination of effort, repetition, practice, knowledge, learning, but you got to learn it on your own. Anyway, he, had, he, he's amazing. He's a super awesome veteran, worked at Blizzard, um, you know, Lucasfilm, all kinds of, I think it was at Disney at one point. So yeah, he, he really was awesome. So you could, the reason I bring this up, the reason mm -hmm. I say it is because I see that growth. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so if you guys are, uh, you know, I talked to a lot of people who are just getting into this stuff. If you are, oh man, it seems so difficult. Um, it is possible. Okay. You just got to apply yourself and you'll be amazed at how, how far you can go. If you really apply yourself and mm -hmm. boom, you go up and you just, you know, could, you know, it takes time, right? It's not like it happened overnight. It might take a year, it might take two, it might take three, five. Okay. It could, could take that long, but uh, it's a marathon, not a sprint, right? If you think of this as the start of your career, you got to go slow and steady, slow and steady. And it's going to win. Okay. Now, um, yeah, I could, I could talk on and on about this. There are other strategies too, right? In order to go slow and steady like that, you got to have other, your other bases covered, right? So if you're broke and you got to pay rent and you do, so like you can't take these calculated risks until you get the economics of your house in order, right? Wherever you are, if you're a broke student or whatever it is, uh, and I've been there, trust me. <laughs> so mm -hmm. then you got You have to be able to um, get that in order and then you know build on those successes. You, know, you meet people, you get skills, you network, you collaborate, and there's ways to do that. Online is so powerful. Like you know, we're really taking advantage of that stuff on. The storyboard art platform but i didn't have this stuff when when i was coming up and it's like the information now people like i said that kid i was telling you about kenny he's not a kid anymore he's like you know early 20s uh but now he's a rocking professional uh but you know i wasn't as good as he he is when when i was 19 i could barely do anything so that that stuff is happening sooner that i see because i think the access to the information is a lot easier now so you guys are lucky. Don't don't blow it, okay? <laughs> don't don't just ah, it's easy. I'll just kick it. No, no, just work hard. You'll get there. Right. Oh, yeah, thank you. Cool.
Oh, does question? anybody else have questions? I'm taking up all your time. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm here for. <laughs> uh, I do have a particular question. Um, do you think the age of new production companies is over? Do you think everything now is... Is it... If, I'm guessing that this is going to be a definite yes. It's more difficult to get into your own um to push for your own sort of production company nowadays it would be a much more difficult thing to do that whereas with you know back in the day with disney there wasn't anybody really around so he was like a pioneer of this stuff is it more difficult now um i don't think so i think it's way easier <laughs> now so there's a big shakedown that happened. You probably guys heard of this, right? That Netflix is having some restructuring. They canceled a bunch of projects. I know one guy who was had a green light. He got cut, and he their project got canceled. It was bad news. Actually, I know two people who had their projects cut, um, and so uh, that was straight from from Netflix. I think there's going to be ripples down the road. Like you might see this from Amazon, Hulu, and these and these other platforms. Um, because uh, I think what we're discovering is that there's a little bit of the, 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 the streaming platforms and all these have like a heyday. It's like they're handing out, you know, green lights to, for any kind of random production that's coming on. It seemed like that at least. But now I think they're scaling back because like the numbers are not tracking. The economy is a little weird. But man, I've been through even in my career, I've been at it for maybe 25 years or so. I've seen a lot of ups, ups and downs. When I first started, it was like in the pits, like you could barely get a job. And I had to scramble. Uh, I went overseas. I went to work in Europe and, and did that, which is a great experience. Highly recommend that. <laughs> you guys can do the foreign thing. Um, but if you want to do your own production company, I mean, I think it's always going to be hard. It's always going to be hard to get your ideas out there. But I think the tools that we have at our disposal today are way better than they were 10 years ago. So you have the social media platforms, you have um, you have the, all the streaming opportunities that are there. You have the independent route, which is it's really difficult to crack, but it's there. And if you figure it out, you can, you can do it. Um, I think the, the financing part is always hard. So if you're trying to get other people to invest in you, um, that's really difficult. So one of the things that you have to do is um, mitigate the risk. And how you do that is really going to be up to you reverse engineer that. So some people will start with short films and kind of build up their following and maybe they have a million people that subscribe to them somehow. Um, then that would bring the risk down because they know, oh, this guy's got followers, right? Um, or you have a couple of like, uh, you have a lot of industry experience and you got that under your belt. So they trust you that you can pull things off. Uh, you know, maybe the project is so amazing that you, you know, you really made it tight. You worked on it really hard that people want it really bad because they know uh, maybe you tied it in like I knew a guy who uh, is doing a production now that uh, they're tying in merchandising with the actual production and uh, it's really smart the way they're doing it so um, there's a there's multiple ways that you can come out on top right in the end it's kind of a commercial business that we're getting into right so you can design it that way it's not easy but I think there are ways to do it I would recommend if you're going to go kind of the indie route or try and pitch your own projects to um, to really lean on other people's experience. Like see if you can connect with people who've done it before. Uh, see if you can contact producers who will give you inside information of what to do, what people are looking for or projects that they're looking to get. And maybe you do it that way um, because, uh, and then meanwhile, you got to figure out a way to support yourself, right? So. I know a lot of people that do the day job, they'll work as a production artist or something like that. And on the side, they try and do that, you know, pitch stuff. And some people are successful. Actually, I just spoke to a buddy of mine that is successful doing that or was successful doing that. Um, but that's, again, it's not easy because you got to burn, you know, nights and weekends doing your stuff because during the, during the day you're <laughs> working. So, yeah, but it's possible. I think, uh, how should I put this? Nothing's easy in this business, okay? This is why you gotta love it. So if you 
you're going to find resistance. It's going to get hard at one point. And you're going to have to figure out how to get around that stuff so that you can reach your goal. And I've been fortunate that I've worked in video games. I've worked in um, TV, commercials, all that stuff. So like, There's many different places that I, I went to in order to stay employed. And they were all fun jobs. Like, I don't regret any of that. I got paid, you know, there was during the ups and downs, like I remember I went to video games while the, like the animation was kind of, uh, you know, on, on the lower side of things. And then later on it picked up and I went to Pixar after that. So uh, there's, there's ways to kind of navigate the industry. So that, I, I thought, I like to think about that. You can succeed individually, like the companies will come and go, but you as an artist have to be able to, to survive and make a career out of this. So that you know you're not working at Starbucks or a bookstore. You can con continue to make <laughs> uh, a living doing your art, right? Right, right. Hey, can I can I pass you guys a couple resources if you're into it? Um, let yeah, me give please. you. Thank you. Yeah. So well, again, we sp we sponsor a lot of stuff. I think we might have met, right, Tad, on some of our. Um, yeah on some of our, like the, the courses and, and things that we do on storyboard art, but me, I'll put yeah. this in the chat. Uh, well, one, there's the website. So if any of you guys want to check that out, um, then there's a intro to storyboarding course that we're doing right now, uh, which let me bring that here, got the link, is uh, this one's going on now for the month of June. So um, this is a free course. So if you guys are, uh, into what I'm talking about, I recommend you sign up. And there's a lot, there's hundreds of people signed up already, which is great. And we're already jamming on, on we go on Discord and we, we uh, there's a couple story assignments and we go through them and there's a really great crew that are doing that. Um, so yeah, I recommend doing that. It's completely free and you're going to build your network. Like to me, it's all just a win win on that. And then on Storyboard Art, we also have the mentorship uh, program. If you guys are interested, you can check more of that out. My, my cat agrees. He's back here making noise. Uh, so yeah, uh, there's many ways into this business. And that's where I think, you know, one, you got to have a network, you got to work hard. But um, the sooner you connect with people and the sooner you get moving on these things, the better. And we're all about just training people to, to become pros because um, I don't see it as competition. I see it as just increasing the quality of the industry if we're all doing good work, right? If we're all and you know, bring it on, right? If if I start to suck because everybody else is good around me, that means I have to up my game, right? <laughs> so that I think is a good thing that everybody else is, you know, lifting, lifting the industry. Yeah. Sergio, I have a question for you. Um, I know uh, sometimes union cards come into play when you. Um, I know in order to work as a storyboard artist for, like, say, for a live action film. For example, if you want to work for one of the big studios, typically uh, you have to uh, have your union card. So, yes. Um, what do you think about that? But how? What's the best way to to try to? I know you, there's a like a panel that you have to go through, right? A test that you have to take in order to get that card. But once you, uh, get that, yeah, I mean, it's slightly easier in the animation side. So if you get hired by an animation company that's in the union, uh, you're automatically in the union. So that's good. Um, you know, you have to pay your union dues and stuff like that. I think most of those are just out of LA. So if you're working on a production that's not in LA, it's like uh, not relevant. But um, so it's easier that way. Like if you're at in, in Northern California, where I was like Lucasfilm and, and uh, Pixar were non-union because they're just, that's the way they were set up. Uh, if you work in LA, most of those studios are union, Warner Brothers, Disney, Nickelodeon, et cetera. And you automatically get it in the union. If you're working on a, a live action a movie, uh, yes, most of the bigger ones, the Hollywood type films, you, you, um, they're gonna only work with union people, not all of them. So the smaller studios and maybe independent ones, um, they might not have a union uh, production and then you can get in on that. So there are ways, it's, it's actually easier now uh, than it ever has been to get into the, the, the live action union. I think it's, um, I forgot the number. It's like 800 at C or something like that. I forgot the, the union card. But at any rate, uh, one way to, to get in is if you can work on uh, commercial production. So you can work on 
uh, you know, smaller advertising and commercial gigs. And if you compile that for, uh, I think it's within a year, if you work 30 days uh, consistent on those productions, you can apply to get into the union and you, you get in. Now, this is a other conversation that happens all the time is that um, comes up a lot for about the union thing is that uh, just because you're in a union doesn't mean you're gonna get more work. <laughs> so it just gives you access to more productions, but that doesn't mean you're gonna get the job. You still have to hustle. You still have to make connections. You still have to be a good artist. So it's almost like it's somewhat ir irrelevant. Um, I, I would just say, uh, yeah, just have the strongest portfolio you can, and that'll open up most of the doors for you. And then, you know, eventually you'll get into the union. I know a couple of people who are young artists, but they just, um, they, they ended up working on productions and they put together those hours and boom, they got their union card. And it's, it's great. But that doesn't mean they told me, you know, from them, they, <laughs> they never, um, they didn't get any boost in work because of it. Right. It's just another like badge that you get. Yeah. Right. Well, cool guys. Uh, yeah, I do I, have to go uh, right. off on another meeting pretty soon, but uh, one, I, I would love to keep in touch with you guys. And so the best way to do that for me is, uh, uh, is sign up to our, our, our website. That way we have, the, we have an internal kind of network that we sponsor and you'll see my messages there and a couple of other guys that are on there. But um, yeah, that's the best way to do it. And then you know messages and stuff like that, we, we handle those on Discord. And you can reach me and a bunch of other pros that are on there too, which is kind of fun. Awesome. Yeah. Well, we sure to appreciate you uh, taking time out of your uh, busy day to meet with us, Sergio, and and give us this valuable information. Let's, uh, you know. Let's, yeah, yeah, you're welcome. Good yeah. luck to you guys. I, I look yeah. forward to working with you soon in, in the industry. <laughs>